guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles, welcome to another natural resource struggle. Today I want to talk about things that I think you should remember from your intermediate micro theory course. So again, we're talking about natural resource economics, but this is going to apply broadly to any sort of applied micro class that you're taking as an elective. And so these are just the things that I think it's helpful for you to remember or to sort of review from your intermediate micro course that will be helpful in some of those courses. So what I really want to review is utility maximization, profit maximization, and perfect competition. And really what I want to really hammer for both utility and profit maximization is that when we're doing economics, when we're finding an optimum, we're always looking where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. Now marginal benefit and marginal cost are going to mean different things in different contexts, but at the very basic level, you should know that marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. So when you're looking for an optimum, you're looking for where that marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. So with that in mind, let's just dive right into it. Let's start talking about utility maximization. So remember that utility maximization, basically, you have this guy, Bill. He's going to the store. He's got two goods. He's got Y and X. Could be more, could be less, but we're just thinking about the two goods. He's got a utility function, U of X and Y. He's got some money in his pocket or a budget W. And if Bill wants to maximize his utility, what he's going to do is he's going to maximize U of X and Y subject to his budget constraint, where again, this part right here, PX times X, that's the amount he spends on X. PY times Y, that's the amount he spends on Y. It's got to be less than or equal to the amount of money Bill walked into this store with. And so again, if we're thinking about marginal benefit and marginal cost, what we're going to say is that for Bill, He's got two goods, so we sort of have two marginal benefits and two marginal costs. So for good one, or good x, we're going to have that the marginal benefit is just the marginal utility, which is the extra utility Bill gets from getting one more x. So that's got to be equal to the marginal cost, which for Bill is just the price of that good. And for good two, the marginal benefit is of course the marginal utility of y, and the marginal cost is just p of y. And so if we have two goods and two equations, we can just divide them. And so we go like this. And that is how we get the marginal ratio of substitution is equal to the ratio of the prices, which I've also drawn in right here. And then one thing that's sometimes helpful is you can sort of rearrange that fraction to get MUX over PX, which is just benefit per cost or marginal benefit per marginal cost of X needs to be equal to marginal benefit per marginal cost of y. Or another thing that you can think about is this is bang for buck of x. And at the optimum, it's got to be equal to bang for buck of y. So if you just listen to that and you're confused and you're not sure what's happening, drop a comment or a question below. But that is the basic rundown of utility maximization. And now we're going to turn to profit maximization. So for profit maximization, Remember that profit just generally is total revenue minus total cost. And so if you are given information about revenue and cost, you can always make a profit function by finding total revenue and subtracting total cost. And generally what that's going to be is you're going to have a price P, you're going to have an output level Q. So P times Q is just the amount of revenue you take in. And you're going to have some total cost. That could be variable cost, that could be fixed cost, it could be both. And so what you can do is you can also say that this is a price times output. And if this is average total cost, which is just total cost over quantity, you can just go quantity times average total cost. And so it can be your output times basically your profit margin, which is price minus average total cost. So just to give you a little intuitive example, if we got some coffee, Bill selling coffee now, Bill's the maker of coffee. He gets to sell his coffee for $5. And we say that the amount of coffee that Bill sells is C, then our profit would be something like this is going to be 5 times C minus total cost, whatever that is. And that's how we can find our profit function. Now, the marginal benefit to Bill of selling a coffee is the price of the coffee. So that's going to be 5. And that is going to be the marginal benefit to Bill. It's also equal to the marginal revenue. Now that is going to be at the optimum equal to marginal cost. That is going to be, of course, the marginal cost. And that's generally going to be the derivative of the total cost function. So I'm just going to say this is the derivative of total cost with respect to output. 
And again, if that's confusing or you're not quite sure what's happening, drop a comment or a question below. If your partial derivatives are a little rusty, go ahead and go back and watch that review of derivatives. That'll be really helpful and you're definitely going to need that for most of these elective level classes. And finally, we'll just turn to perfect competition. Remember that perfect competition, for example, like milk, it's a commodity market, so every product is exactly the same. You can't distinguish between producers of that product. So for example, milk, if you go to the store and buy a jug of milk, you can't tell which farm it came from because it's all milk. So we're gonna say in perfect competition, there's an infinite number of firms. Each firm is a price taker. There's no barriers to entry and you have zero profit. And if we look for a single firm, and we've got this nice marginal cost curve right here. This is going to be price equal marginal revenue. You've got an average variable cost curve and you've got an average total cost curve. Again, those curves are going to be at their minimum where they meet marginal cost. We've got a separate video on cost talking about all of this as well. So if you think that would be helpful, I can drop a link to those videos in the description below, but just leave a comment if you think that would be helpful. And so again, for profit, we're just going to look at where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which is right here. We can see that at that level of output, average total cost is exactly equal to our price. So our profit is zero, which is exactly what we said and exactly what happens in perfect competition. Because if people are making a profit, if my friends are all making a lot of money making milk, there's no barriers to entry. I'm going to start making milk. If I start making milk, the supply goes up, price goes down, our profits go down. And then conversely, if we're all in this milk business and we're all losing money, some of us are gonna start leaving the milk industry. As we leave the milk industry, supply goes down, price goes up, and profits will therefore also go up until they're back to zero. So again, this is just the main takeaways from your intermediate micro theory class that I think you should know. Again, you're always thinking marginal benefit equals marginal cost. You should definitely know how a perfect competition works and these curves that I've shown in the right. So like I said, if you've got any questions or comments about any of that, please put that down below. But if you're finding these videos helpful, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.